Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Jeffrey Epstein Show. I'm your host, Bobby Capucci, and this is Daily Drop number 165. Hey, what's going on, everybody? So we have an article from the New York Post tonight, and this article is about the executors of Jeffrey Epstein's estate and the scumbaggery that they're up to right now. And what's so annoying about this and maddening about this is the fact that they thought they were going to slip it in on a Friday night, bury it in the news cycle, the Friday news cycle, when everybody is focused on what's going on with COVID-19 and the outbreak and the effects it's having worldwide. These clowns thought that they were going to slip this in on a Friday, that they were going to be tactical, and that we were going to miss it. Well, Mr. Indyke, Mr. Khan, like in so many other instances throughout your lives, I'm sure, but certainly in your relationship with Jeffrey Epstein, you were wrong. We caught it. It just came through on the wire. I was waiting to do the daily drop tonight to see if something, some new news came through. And lo and behold, a couple of hour go, uh, hours ago, this story pops up. So let's jump right into it, shall we? Like I said, it's from the New York Post, and the author is Priscilla D. Gregory. Executors of Jeffrey Epstein's estate say victim's lawsuit is time-barred. Executors of Jeffrey Epstein's estate want a lawsuit filed under the Child Victims Act to be tossed, in part because some of the victims were adults when the alleged abuse occurred, according to new court papers. Well, isn't that funny, huh, folks? Isn't it funny that Ghislaine Maxwell comes out in the sun and has a whole bunch of things to say through her mouthpiece, Laura Goldman, things that I pointed out that if you read between the lines, sure look like veiled threats, and now you have the estate um, in char- of the people who were in charge of the estate, uh, Indyke and Khan, who were also mentioned, not by name, but mentioned by Ghislaine Maxwell earlier, now you have them coming forward and trying to get things thrown out. Do you think this is a coincidence, folks? Does this stuff just happen on their own, or is this part of the bigger picture? In my opinion, one thing we've learned with this case is you always have to look at the bigger picture. All these little things that might not make sense on their own, well, yeah, all right, pieces of the puzzle never make sense on their own. Once you start putting things together, though, the bigger picture emerges, and then you have an idea of what is truly going on. And I think this all ties together. I really, truly believe that this all ties together, that Ghislaine Maxwell has really fired off some serious warning shots this time, and it it, it looks like it probably has these guys shook. The galling filing from the Epstein estate concerns nine women who sued the estate in December, claiming the now-dead pedophile sexually abused them between the years of 1985 and 2007. It's, it's obscene. It's obscene that these executors would make this move. All of a sudden, they think that this is a quality move, folks. All of a sudden, they think this is the proper move. After all the bullshit we were fed about how they wanted to get the victims fund up, and they wanted to make sure that the survivors got the reparations that they deserved, after all that bullshit from Indyke and Khan, this is what we get. And we called it here on this podcast, and you all knew that as well. It's not like I'm some sort of, uh, you know, psychic here. I'm not the, I'm not sitting here in Mrs. Cleo's head wrap. But we all saw it coming down the pipe. We all knew the type of people we were dealing with. We all know that Khan and Indyke are not the proper men to be in charge of this. They should be removed. I don't know how all of that works. I'm not a legal guy, right? But let's let's get them removed somehow. That that should definitely occur. They're not acting in good faith here. Denise George, you got a lot of bark. Where's that bite? Can we get some of that bite or are you just, you know, motivated to get the money from the island so you can, you know, enrich your people? Whereas, really, you should be going after people like Indyke and Khan. You singled them out as being part of Epstein's criminal enterprise, for Lord's sake. And here they are, making these sorts of demands in court. How is that even possible? The lawsuit includes plaintiffs who say they were as young as 13 at the time of the abuse. Imagine that. These girls were 13 at the time of the abuse. As the the executors of this estate, how can you even go into court and make that argument to try and defend this man's fortune from these girls who obviously, obviously are telling the truth? What sort of scumbag stands up and champions that? Indyke and Khan, 
That's the kind of scumbags I guess, folks. On Friday, executors Darren Indyke and Richard Kahn filed papers asking a judge to throw the case out because the extremely thin allegations asserted by all of the plaintiffs failed to state a claim and are time-barred in any event as each of these assaults alleged to have been committed by Jeffrey E. Epstein, now deceased, against three plaintiffs occurred between 13 and 35 years ago. Yeah, well, so what? What does that even mean? time barred. No, they're not time barred. You're not getting a loophole this time. This this time, You're not going to uh, consult with, with your buddy Alan Dershowitz in some back room and force the prosecutors to go your way and force the whole entire case to chew off of your narrative. That's not going to happen this time, okay? I don't care if it was 350 years ago. I don't care if it was 3,500 years ago, and I have to read about it on a, on a, a tabernacle, okay? I don't really give a shit at this point. These people are absolutely disgusting, and they are so brazen with the way they throw it in our face. Enough is enough. The suit was filed under the Child Victims Act, which opens a one-year look-back window for people who were victims of child abuse to bring claims that have since passed outside of the statute of limitations. As if that's not a good law, right? Anyone who's arguing with that law, I don't even know what to tell you. I mean, I, I don't even understand. Like, there's people that, like, are still championing. They're, they're still playing champion for Prince Andrew and for Ghislaine Maxwell. And I, I just, I, the, the thought that goes into that, the mind, the, the, the mental gymnastics that one must engage in to come to a conclusion that these people are innocent is just... It's foreign to me. I can't, it's tiring to even think to try and have to do all of that, to come to a conclusion that these people are not guilty. I mean, look at all the, the overabundance of evidence from all of these, these girls, from all of their accounts, from all of the accounts of everybody that was around Epstein that has been, uh, that has been subpoenaed or has give, uh, given depositions. It's, it all, can, it's all co uh, corroborates with what Virginia and these other girls have said. And for... Indyke and Khan to come out here and act like this right now and to act like th their their allegations don't matter because there was a few years ago or even 35 years ago is a bunch of bullshit, especially from these two dirtbags. These two dirtbags have to go. They, they have no business sitting up there and deciding who gets what when they were involved with this ongoing criminal enterprise. How many direct payments were put into their bank accounts? How many, how many presents did Jeffrey Epstein buy these two dudes? Why were they named the executors of his estate? These are all questions that are valid. These are all questions that need to be an, uh, asked. And these are all questions that we deserve answers to. But six of the nine plaintiffs were over the age of 18 when the alleged offenses occurred. Indyke and Kahn's lawyer, Matthew Aronson, wrote in court papers filed in Manhattan Sp Supreme Court. Again, they're looking for loopholes. It's not that they're saying that the assaults didn't occur, because they know that that's bullshit. They know that every single one of these assaults occurred. Now they're looking for loopholes. Oh, they were over 18. They're not protected over the, uh, under this act. Blah, blah, F and blah. B.S. Absolute BS. And I'm tired of these kind of people looking to get out of this shit with loopholes. I'm tired of them getting a slap on the wrist. I'm tired of them navigating through the legal system that they helped create. It is all a farce. It's like professional wrestling at this point, watching it. It is just a, a, a joke. The two-tier justice system is a joke, and that's what we're seeing here once again. The rich and the elite get off on technicalities, they get off on loopholes, while the rest of us have to play by the rules, while the rest of us have to do exactly what the law says or suffer severe consequences in most cases. Meanwhile, Jeffrey Epstein gets off 13 months of a BS jail sentence, the core four are still running around, Jean-Luc Brunel still running around, Prince Andrew still running around, Glenn Dubin, well, at least he got fired, you know, he's not, no longer in his position, but he's still running around, same for Wexner, same for Jess Staley, you name it. All of these people are still running around, and these gals who are looking for justice are still dealing with this sort of bullshit from Indyke and Khan, the dudes that are in charge of the, the, the estate, how is that in anyone's world acceptable? 
Well, I'll tell you what, it is not acceptable in my world. Victim's lawyer Jordan Merson says that even the women who were older than 18 when they were allegedly abused by Epstein are still allowed to sue because the criminal case filed against the multimillionaire financier, pedophile, opened up the statute of limitation to them. Again, I'm not a legal guy, right? I'm not a lawyer. I don't understand, you know, the loopholes or any of that. So that part of it, they'll have to fight it out in court right? And again, I don't even care if it's a loophole, a loophole and a, you know, they, they, they uh, rule in the favor of the executors and Epstein's estate, then it just what it, what it goes to show you again is what a farce our legal system has become, what a farce the justice system is, and how we are completely and utterly up against it as common citizens. The Epstein estate executors call into question the validity of the entire CVA, which was passed by the New York lawmakers last year and went into effect in August, in addition to arguing that the women who were underage at the time don't have a case. Well, that shows you right there that Kahn and Indyke and their lawyer, they really don't have a case. They're arguing against the validity of the entire CVA. Not just this case, basically. So they understand that they're swimming uphill at this point against the current. And that's good. I'm glad to read that. Because these guys, Indyke and Khan, they should not be allowed to write the rules. The CVA is unconstitutional and fails to revive any of the plaintiff's, cla plaintiff's claims, the court papers claim. It is disconcerting that the estate is attempting to use antiqu antiquated laws, uh, antiqu antiquated laws, state laws, to try to shirk its responsibility to these sexual assault survivors. Merson said, "100%. How dare they? How dare they think that they're going to be able to game the system once again? After the system's been gamed so many times in this case, for these dirtbags to think it's going to happen again while we're all paying attention this time?" Oh, they are sorely mistaken. While none of their arguments have a, sh a scintilla of merit, the fact they are even trying to do this confirms that further statute of limitations reform is needed by the New York State Legislature. The 66-year-old convicted pedophile hanged himself in a, lawyer, a lower Manhattan lockup, allegedly, while he was awaiting trial on charges of sex trafficking. This this article has me pretty fired up right now, and I don't I don't know how many more ways I can convey the message to you, but the message is clear. Indyke and Khan are part of this criminal enterprise. They should not be executors in this case. They should be nowhere near it. In fact, they shouldn't be arguing who's getting what. They should be worried about what sort of RICO charges they're facing. Mr. Berman, once again. Why are you dragging your feet, sir, if you're listening out there, or any of your agents are listening out there, or anyone associated with you who even loosely is listening out there? Please, get to work, sir. Get to work. Start arresting these people. They can't run around forever, shoving it in the survivors' faces. While these survivors have to scratch and claw just to have a little bit of validation even in the mainstream media. Never mind the reparations that are coming to them, just to, just to have the validation that their stories are believed by the legacy media. And here we have the Attorney General, Mr. Berman, talking a good game, but again, we don't see any movement. And I understand we're all impatient at this point, right? I know the, the, the jaws of the federal government, especially when it comes to law in America, they take time to grind around and slap on an ankle, but when it's a normal person... They sure are moving a lot quicker. They remand you, put you in custody. You have to make bail, all of that. The embarrassment of it, they'll come to, you, come to your house. They'll pull you out of your house. They'll come to your job, yank you away from your job. Meanwhile, if you're engaged in an ongoing intercontinental criminal enterprise, that's their, their main bread and butter is human trafficking, well, there's no repercussions. How is that acceptable? Mr. Berman, please, you have to do your job, sir. It's the only way that there's ever going to be justice in this case is if one of these people, one of these prosecutors, 
lights a fire under their own ass, or if we light the fire so hot under their ass that they're forced into action. And we'll know that they're serious when they start slapping people with RICO charges. Once the RICO statutes start getting slapped around, folks, you know that we're entering another phase of this case. Until then, it is up to us to keep the pressure on. It is up to us to keep the full court press on to make sure that this case does not go away. It can easily fade away right now, folks, with the whole entire situation going on around the world. This is, this is the time when cases like this easily fade away from the headlines, where they're no longer front and center. We're already seeing that with this case. The news is, you know, one or two articles a day tops. But that's not going to daunt us. We're not going to stop. We're not going to, be, not, not going to take a pause. We're going to keep pushing for justice in this case, and we're going to keep pushing for the truth to be revealed. All right, everybody, like I said, on Sunday, I'll be premiering my new podcast that deals with the COVID-19 Wuhan SARS outbreak, and then on Monday, we'll be doing episode three of the Core 4 series. As for tomorrow... Back to the usual, the usual scheduled programming. We'll have our morning update and our daily drop. If you would like to contact me, you can do that at bobbycapucci at protonmail.com. That's B-O-B-B-Y-C-A-P-U-C-C-I at protonmail.com. Also, you can find me on Twitter at B-O-B-B-Y underscore C-A-P-U-C-C-I. All right, everybody. Have a good Friday night, and I will speak with you all in the morning.